Hi guys, and welcome to this video here with regards to correlation and causality. This is a great little video, it's relatively quick, a lot of me talking, sadly, very few examples, but there are VCAR exam examples coming up. Now we've done a lot on correlation already. We've got Pearson's correlation coefficient, we've got the coefficient of determination, life is really good. We're almost at the end of this uh, series of videos, there's only one more to go, which is which graph? Really, really short, if you haven't watched it, it's a doozy. Now, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already done so, do me a favor on subscribe by clicking that little doohickey in the corner. It just let me know that you are watching. Nothing more exciting than that. Never going to be rich and never going to be famous. But it just lets me know that people are watching and gives me a bit of a purpose for doing these videos. Otherwise, every now and again, I just give up because it's like no one's watching. They're all watching cat videos. Uh, otherwise, there's mathsguru.com. If you haven't found that, it's also free to sign up where all the videos are linked and ordered by textbook, by chapter, and have downloadable notes. And as I develop more and more resources, it will all be uploaded on there, including exam solutions. Correlation of causality um, is really important to know that we have, in previous lessons, looked at this idea of correlation. Right, so Pearson's correlation coefficient is nothing more than a measure of how close those little kisses are to perfectly straight lines or not. It does not necessarily mean that there is a relationship between the two. Okay, it does not mean that one causes the other. All right, and that, that's the, probably the biggest word here that's most important. Does a change in one variable cause the change in the other. All right, so for example, um, I quite like this one here, ice cream sales versus the sale of hats. Believe it or not, if you were to draw a graph of ice cream sales versus the sale of hats, all right, so um, ice cream, we'll put there, and we'll put hats here. Believe it or not, you will get something that looks like that. A little surprising, because as far as I'm concerned, there is no way that the sale of ice creams can cause the sale of hats. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, and yet, actually, that's what you'll end up. Maybe not as perfectly, beautifully, kitty straight as that, but not far off. What we would notice is that there is a very much definite upward trend in our data. Why? How can ice cream sales and hats have this level of correlation? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is in fact a third variable. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But again, I know I keep going on about this, but correlation does not imply causality or a cause, all right? Just because two things have some sort of a correlation does not mean that they are in fact related or caused, that one causes the other. Okay, so important language for this uh, particular exam and this particular section is the was three things. One, common response. Now, as I just said here a moment ago, if we looked at that idea, oh, let's not draw in highlighter, I keep doing that. Oh, let's not draw it in purple either. If I look again at my ice cream versus my hats and those kisses, you have to ask yourself the question, is something else causing this increase? And yes, there is a common response. One other thing that links hats and ice creams together, and what would that be? Well, obviously ice creams, temperature. As the temperature goes up for ice creams, so will the number of ice creams sold. As the temperature goes up, what are people gonna buy more of? Probably hats, particularly in Australia where you have to be sun smart. So in this situation, we would say that temperature is a common response. And for lots, of sort of uh, correlations between two different variables, there may be just one common response. And you have to think about this. The problem with sort of the uh, exam is they may throw questions here that will ask you to sort of have some wider understanding of the world. In a previous video, I asked you to go and Google the Human Development Index. Always useful to know what that one is for further maths. But sometimes in further maths, we write questions that just ask you to think and give your opinion. It's not all plonking into a calculator. Please be the calculator and sort of just spitting down what the answer is. Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. 
Masquero.com. Yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there. It's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think. It is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys. I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.